All right, another video to my buddy Kilakami for mommy, A. Wyatt Mon. Uh, hey, I'm responding to your video called Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion and Vaccinations. Listen, my friend, you've been duped. Um, the protocols or the protocols of Zion or the protocols of learned elders of Zion aka about 10 other names um, is a plagiarism and a forgery um, it's based on two works it was plagiarized from two works one published in 1864 by I believe I have them I have the information here and you can get all this on Wikipedia I've put the links in the uh, 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 description box which I think is over there, um, along with uh, links to the text that I could locate. Uh, by Maurice Jolie in 1864, French satirist and lawyer, um, di The Dialogue in Hell Between Machiavelli and Montesquieu. And I've got a link to the French one, which is Dialogue aux Enfers entre Machiavelli et Montesquieu. You know, uh, Machiavelli was the uh, famous uh, Italian political thinker I believe from Florence uh, in the 1500s, and Montesquieu was from the 1800s, uh, French uh, during the Enlightenment period. Montesquieu's, I think, best known for um, oh, framing the uh, the uh, theory of the separation of powers, which you know is central to our own constitution and to other constitutions. Um, uh, in different countries. Fascinating political thinker. And, you know, Machiavelli's famous for having written Il Principe, The Prince, which is uh, advice to one of the uh, the Medici's in Florence. He was he was uh, uh, banished, and he, he wrote the book to try to get into the good graces, to get back into the good graces of the Medici, but uh, he, uh, he wasn't accepted back in. Anyway, two very different political thinkers, and so this dialogue in hell between the two of them must be a fascinating book. Um, I've got a link to both the English and the French text in the description box. I actually ordered the book, too, because it looks really interesting. Um, then also, there's a second source of plagiarism. It was a, a, a novel of the time. Uh, it looks like um, Maurice Jolie took some ideas from this novel, and the novel was by Eugène Sue, a French novelist. Um, interestingly, man, uh, from what I was reading on Wikipedia, Eugène Sue um, basically basically took these ideas. The hypothesis in that novel was that it was the Jesuits who were trying to take over the world. Uh, Maurice Jolie, uh, he changed it to the, what was it, the, uh, what does Maurice Jolie have them, oh, oh yeah, yeah. He puts the words of, he, he, he puts the words of uh, uh, our buddy uh, Machiavelli into Napoleon III, who was a uh, uh, French emperor. You know, the French have a very incredibly complex political history after their revolution and you know, we support each other in our, our mutual revolutions but they had you know the reign of terror and they had a republic and they had another empire and a second republic and a sec second or third empire etc you know very complex uh, compared to us you know, we had a revolution and then we've continued on but uh, but they, anyway, as a result, their political work is very, very rich. Uh, so uh, anyway, he, he was basically crit criticizing Napoleon III, and apparently neither book uh, mentions the Masons or mentions the Jews, but um, the uh, protocols were later plagiarized from these two sources, uh, apparently in the early 1900s, maybe 1905 or so, appeared in Russia. Uh, there's some thought that the uh, the Tsar Nicholas, that his secret police, you know, they somehow they, they concocted this thing along with some journalists, and uh, they tried to bring down the Bolsheviks. They blamed the Bolsheviks, um, and eventually it became an anti-Semitic uh, text, uh, a favorite of uh, of Hitler, uh, Adolf Hitler. And it's basically remained now an anti-Semitic anti text, uh, rather than, you know, the, the origin is one against the Jesuits, and then uh, after that, one against Napoleon III, and then after that, one against, you know, whoever, 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 and it's primarily, primarily an anti-Semitic text now. And I notice you have an anti-Semitic image in your uh, video, which I must say I think is, is dis distasteful to say the least. You should... You should uh, take that down or delete that or, you know, replace it with something else. Uh, anyway, links are in the description box. Hey, man, I really recommend reading this stuff. Um, 
you know, uh, the this thing was uncovered as a um, as plagiarism and as a forgery because it is it is fraud um, um, uh, in about 1921. You know, in your video also you you show the symbol of the American Medical Association. You say you're sensing some link. You mention uh, uh, snakes and uh, Jewish myth. Um, you know, all that's anti-Semitic stuff. But in any event. The caduceus, the, the the symbol that's on the uh, that represents medicine or the American Medical Association, is not from Jewish myth. It's from Greek myth. It's uh, attributed to Hermes. It's a staff of Hermes, uh, the messenger of the gods, um, and they believe that that was an error. They they believe it was really uh, mistaken for the uh, the staff of. Asclepius, who was the uh, god of medicine, who had a single staff with a single snake, but somehow it got replaced with Mercury's uh, double snaked uh, uh, staff, you know. So, uh, so that's not from Jewish myth. That's from Greek mythology. Um, what else, man? I, I just encourage you to, uh, you know, hey, hey, read Montesquieu for sure, man. That that looks like fascinating stuff. I've, I've ordered a copy of, uh, of both these books. I couldn't find the. Um, the novel of Eugène Sue, uh, Eugène Sue, that one was called uh, the, one of the sources that were plagiarized was called um, oh where is it Les Mystères du Peuple, Histoire d'une famille de prolétaires à travers les âges, uh, which I translate as uh, the mysteries of the people, history of a proletarian family through the ages. Um, apparently the, the it's been out of print in English for you know decades and decades and decades um, and it was never fully translated into English I found it I found a French version which I've linked to uh, in the description box I've ordered a copy of the French version because it looks very interesting and definitely I got a copy of the uh, Jolie's book, The Dialogue in Hell Between Machiavelli and Montesquieu, because they're really interesting political thinkers, and I really recommend reading Montesquieu. I mean, articulating the theory of the separations of powers, powers is so core, um, to, as, a, as you know, to our Constitution. Uh, it's also interesting that he talks about these three as being administrative powers, and he separates that from the sovereign power, which, you know, under, under a monarchy is a king, but under our system is the people. Uh, uh, as being sovereign, so it's it's very interesting, you know, that that these three powers in our country, the the pre the presidency, the uh, the legislative branch, executive branch, legislative branch, and judicial branch, those are simply administrative powers, you know, uh, which are administering to the people as sovereign. So anyway, Montesquieu, yes, 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 Machiavelli. You know, I've read the Prince. I haven't read his other political works. I've read the Prince. It's uh, you know, it, it's known for being really cold and calculating. Uh, it's also interesting to read, but, uh, you know, um, just, uh, I don't know. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read Montesquieu first, uh, but they're, they're both really good. Hey, talking about that, go back and read Aristotle, man. Aristotle's great, got great political stuff, too. He mentions uh, all the different forms of government at the time, or at least the works attributed to him. I don't know. Anyway, uh, forget that, uh, you know, uh, the... That forgery, man. That counterfeit document. That plagiarism. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know the the, the protocols. Um, complete forgery, man. And probably one of the most well, according to this, one of the most well known or the most well known fabrication in literary history, man. So they really duped you, man. They really duped you. And um, I know you've got the pamphlet there. Um, I don't know who's printing it. Uh, you know, uh, there'll always be somebody printing that thing. You know, uh, people love conspiracy theories. Word on conspiracy th conspiracy theories. Whether the conspiracy theory is that it is the Masons or the Templars or the New World Order, or the UFOs, or you know the you know the you know conspiracy theories weaken us, in my opinion. They just make us feel helpless. They make us feel dread. Something's out of our control. We need to feel empowered. You know, we empower ourselves by 
good, solid understanding of uh, political theory and political governments and uh, by action in our own realm, you know. But conspiracy, the th conspiracy theories are only going to make people feel weak. Once people feel weak, they kind of despair, they get desperate, they get depressed, you know. And none of it is solid, man. You know, I still have not seen any good evidence of, of any of these conspiracy theories that they're real. And hey, hey the UFO thing, man... I haven't seen one clear photograph. They're all blurry for some reason. No one can come up with one in-focus photograph of a UFO. They're all blurry. So uh, just like all these conspiracy theories, man, the enemy is always blurry, anonymous, and people project their own fears and hatreds, uh, which is based on fear. So don't live in fear, man. Don't live in fear. Okay, that's the story, buddy. Talk to you later. Uh, read that stuff, man. It's great political stuff. Bye.